uh, Sir President, how would you like to be addressed po by our Filipino uh, people? Uh, para mas, yung, yung name calling ba, kumbaga, at para mas madaling uh, patandaan? <laughs> I think, lilitaw na lang at lilitaw. I don't know. Um, PBBM? Okay na yun? <laughs> that will work. Uh, you know, uh, I was SBBM when I was in, in the Senate. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a, that, that will work. Eh, kilala na ako ngayon. Eh, uh, kilala na ako, especially in the public because of the campaign of BBM. So, maybe that's the logical uh, way to go. So, PBBM na po. <laughs> um, and then, uh, pwede ko nilang with the economy. Yeah, yeah. Um, ano po yung magiging first order of the day po ninyo since kayo na po ay proclaimed as the 17th uh, President of the Republic of the Philippines? Well, the first priority is always going to be the economy. Uh, and that's why it, uh, we have been very, very careful in choosing the economic team. Uh, it's still down to jobs, to, price, to the increasing prices of commodities, uh, some relief for the business community. Um, we have to uh, we have to streamline the operations of government, which immediately brings us to uh, digital, uh, uh, digital and uh, IT and digital communication, para maging mas maganda ang patakbo. Uh, and also, it will it will be better for the Philippines for the simple reason that the rest uh, when we deal with other countries, everybody else is digitized. Tayo lang medyo uh, So it will it will it will make quicker. Uh, ganun lang negosyo ngayon, eh. ganun lang, uh, investment ngayon. Kailangan talaga digitized. So those are the immediate things because those are the things that I think we can immediately uh, enforce. Uh, but you know the, the things we spoke about during the campaign, hindi pang kampanya lang yan. Uh, we really need to do something about. Uh, we need to find help for our MSMEs. We really have to uh, uh, create once again the value chain for agriculture. Uh, education needs a lot of. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, uh, that uh, Vice President Sara has decided to take on the job. It's not a small job. Uh, so education to increase, and of course the infrastructure development continues. Uh, so these are the things that we can immediately go on. That's why what that, that's why I'm using the time between now and the 1st of July to plan, uh, to talk to everybody and say, mali po, maging maliwanag ang, ang plano para nakakaintindihan tayo lahat. Ito yung dapat natin natuwin. Um, so, uh, I guess on the 1st of uh, July, we will have a uh, cabinet meeting immediately uh, just to uh, Everybody knows the money. Sali mga kinukuha naman namin. Kilala, kilala na mag, magkakilala na yan. They worked together before uh, in their different uh, areas. So, uh, we, but the important thing is to be very clear amongst ourselves, the cabinet, and uh, in, in, with the public as well, that this is what the directions that we are taking. Uh, this is how we plan to do it. Uh, this is, uh, we will engage with certain agencies, with the private sector, uh, with, uh, with citizens, uh, NGOs even. Uh, to move the thing forward, so uh, I think I think we've made a good start in the last what uh, since May nine last three weeks, two weeks, two and a half weeks. Uh, I think we've made a good start. Uh, there's still a long way to go, but I think we've made a good start already. Uh, the most important thing for me is to get the right people in the right place. Meron na po ba tayong economic teams na? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Um, I, I think it would be appropriate to be to say that. Uh, I will be nominating uh, our BSP president, Ben Jongdom, for the position of uh, uh, Secretary of Finance. He has already agreed, who's upcoming, and he has agreed. His place in the BSP will be uh, taken uh, by Philip Medalla, who is going to be the, uh, who will take on his unexpired term, which lasts until the young, young term, palagin ng uh, president, BSP president, Sanga, is, uh, in this case, is until July. So at the very least, he will. Uh, he will be there. I have asked uh, Fred Pasquale to head the DTI, and he has agreed. Um, so, but uh, we talk about the economic team, and maybe normally we don't consider this uh, the department part of it, but it is going to be part of it. Uh, I am uh, intending to nominate the Mani Bunuan uh, for the Department of Public Works and Highways. Uh, he has spent almost his entire professional uh, life in the DPWH. I know him very well, uh, so I think he will do. A, I, he will. I know he will do a good job. Uh, so those are the those are the, the things that we have decided. I know the economic team is critical, and that is what people are what people are uh, looking to. Uh, I think we have found uh, the best people for it, um, who are able to to look forward and to anticipate what the conditions will be for the Philippines within the rest of the world uh, in the coming years. Thank you, Santos. Mr. MJ. 
sir. Congratulations. First of all, thank you. Uh, thank yung, uh, management namin ay uh, napapabot po ng pagbati sa inyong panalo. And especially uh, my big boss, uh, Reverend Dr. Pastor Apollo C. Jibuloy. Well, I thank him. But uh, he was a very big part of uh, what we were trying to do. Kasama ka naman lagi. Eh. You're always with us. No? Sir, balikan ko lang po yung uh, sa economy. May mga panawagan, sir, na i-postpondo uh, po na implementation ng RCEP. RCEP and oh. also, sir, nagdag ko mamaya yung oil excise tax. Yung? Oil excise tax, sir. Ah, ah. Uh, Okay, let's do this to ourselves first. Uh, ang, sa aking pananaw, uh, we'll, let's have another look at it because the RCEP is a very fine thing. I'm, ako talagang um, a great proponent, believer in trade. Uh, hindi talaga tayo, hindi, walang, walang umaman ng bansa na hindi maganda ang kanilang trade. Na meron silang manufacturing, marami silang in-export. Uh, they, they are very involved in trade. That, that all, the, all, the, all the great economies in the past, what, 200, 300 years, it really came down to trade. So that's something that we want to encourage and what is what RCEP seeks to do. Now, the only uh, stumbling block, the only possible stumbling block there is that uh, it's all very well to trade if you are in a competitive position. And I do not know that our, our agricultural sector is sufficiently robust to take on to take on the competition that uh, the opening of the markets will, will cause uh, ourselves. So, uh, let's have a look at it again uh, and make sure na hindi naman, hindi naman maluluki ang um, ating agri-sector. Um, pag, pagka i-renatify na natin yan, dapat handa na yung sistema natin na makipag-compete. No, Dahil kung hindi talaga makipag-compete, masasapawan sila. Mawawala yung ating mga local and pa yan, panay na lang ang import natin. And we don't want that. If we want to beef up the agricultural sector, we want to have sufficient uh, food supply uh, for the Philippines. In case of any crisis, uh, we should really learn our lessons from the pandemic. Uh, that uh, huwag natin papapayaan yan. Dahil pag may dumating na crisis na ganyan, eh, naramdam na ramdam ng tao, kulang pagkain for various reasons. So anyway, uh, sa RCEP, uh, tignan natin ulit exactly what will be the effect, pag-aralan natin ng mabuti, that if we ratify it now, what will be the effect on our farming community, our farmers especially, they need protection. Hirap na hirap ang mga magsasaka. Uh, and how will it impact what our plans are to, as I mentioned earlier, create the value chain for agriculture once again. So that's, uh, that's uh, those are the, you know, those are, that is my view on ours. Pag-aralan natin ang mabuti. Uh, pagkaya ng ating magsasaka o suportahan natin ng gobyerno at kaya na silang mag-compete, di i-ratify na natin yan. But uh, let's, let's protect our farmers. Sir, so, uh, oil excise tax. Uh, ah, yung oil excise tax. Uh, I think there are other ways to handle the increase uh, and the disturbances uh, that we are having in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of the petroleum products that we're importing. Uh, we can support those areas na tinamaang kaagad ng pagtaas ng presyo ng langis. Number one, there was transport. And this is important because transport is going to be critical in the resurgence of the economy. And the reason I say that is because nakikita na natin. There are this, well, we keep talking about supply chain problems that have arisen post-pandemic post sa ibang lugar. I don't, I don't consider us post-pandemic yet. I think we are still hopefully at the tail end. But nonetheless, uh, nakikita na natin in other countries na yun ang ginagawa. Na, uh, the trans, na nagkakaproblema doon sa transport situation. Uh, because COVID changed everything, we tried to go back nung bumubukas ang ikon mga ekonomiya. Sinubukan natin bumalik doon sa dating gawin. Hindi na maari yun. We have to do it uh, in a different way. And we have to be more creative uh, and more aware of what uh, the future uh, uh, global economy is going to look like. So in terms of oil excise tax, I think we still have to, to, to look at that very well. If there is a commensurate, um, if there is a commensurate uh, return, to somehow deferring the collection of the excise tax. What will be the penalty of The government needs the money. Wala, wala, mahirap ang pondo, mahirap ang gobyerno sa pondo ngayon. Uh, the government needs the money. Pero kung talagang makikita naman, may ano naman yan eh. Pag sinabi mo, tanggalin natin yung excise tax o bawasan natin yung excise tax, ano yung magiging effect? Doon talaga bang worth it ba na mawala yung uh, pondo o yung income ng, ng, ng gobyerno? Uh, kasi mas magiging maganda naman ang effect sa ekonomiya. 
and but with Makabawi tayo. So we have to study that. There's still a cost benefit analysis. Uh, it's not simple, but that's what we will have to do. But of course, that will be one of the areas that will be under under intense study uh, in the first few weeks because we really have to see our fiscal policy, how we handle it, and we have to be more um, analytical in the way that we impose new taxes or withdraw old taxes or amend the tax uh, uh, structure uh, to see that there will be, a, as I said, a commensurate uh, advantage, perhaps in another part of, of, of the economy. But uh, kailangan meron naman talagang may balance, may balance naman. So, um, kasi pag nawala ka agad yan, wala naman tayong pang, pang uh, bigay ng tupad, wala naman tayong pang bigay ng ayuda, eh, kailangan pa rin ng tao yan. But if the economy is ready, kahit kung nakunin mo yan, may trabaho na, then perhaps we can think about it. Thank you, James. Come right in. Uh, PBBM, sir. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, our debt stands at 13 trillion right now. Uh, may pinropose po ang Department of Finance the fiscal consolid consolidation plan that Correct. details measures for revenue generation yeah. para matugunan tong utang na to. It includes deferment of personal income tax reduction, mm -hmm. limiting VAT exemptions, yes. and excise tax. Yes. Where do you stand on these tax measures? I think that's, a, that's an examination we really have to undertake. I, I mean, just just uh, just for what I hear from legal practitioners, we have to codify our tax. Kasi yung tax natin, hindi, walang, it, 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 it has evolved over over many administrations uh, and what we I, what I will try to apply is that there will be a a uh, in, hindi lang yung kuha tayo dito sa syntax kuha tayo dito sa oil kuha tayo dito sa housing kuha tayo dito sa cooperative hindi kailangan talaga may plano tayo so gagawin natin yung plano natin and the the fiscal policy is going to follow that um, now in my discussions with uh, with our legislators yesterday uh, we are trying to create some fiscal space so that to reduce the load on uh, to reduce the load on ordinary citizens and maybe move the load up the tax uh, the tax load up uh, and uh, there are, there are also distribution of wealth uh, uh, implications to that which are very very important it's one of the areas that I think we have to work on very very hard um, the distribution of wealth to the Filipinas has not been very equitable and so that's something that we that the fiscal policy will hope to. Uh, balance, be, be, uh, achieve a better balance. So, um, it, we, we, again, uh, it, we, we must approach all of these things. The economy is, 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 a, is a living thing, and it, 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 you cannot just do look at one area uh, without trying to uh, anticipate what the real effect is will be for the entire economy and for. So, we have to. The, 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 the point I'm making is that we have to have an economic recovery plan. And the fiscal policy will follow that. Well, do we, what areas will we encourage? Uh, you know, what comes up off the top of my mind is MSMEs got that. Uh, maybe we boss boss and another, or we give them a holiday, tax amnesty, tax holiday. We have studied, we've been, we've been studying, we're studying that now. Because that's the only way that I can see. We do microfinancing, even in the private sector. We want them to come back uh, because they're, they're 62% of our employees are in MSMEs. Uh, so they, so they, 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 the, the agriculture also, uh, you adding adding uh, ayuda, uh, the fertilizer that you buy, urea is petroleum based in terms of pricing, and it's imported, and it has gotten to such a severe situation that there are, there are farmers now who just don't plant. Because if urea is at what uh, two thousand pesos, sabi niya di na makumikita, so unala, nito we do something else, mag mag magingis na lang kami or we do something else. Uh, and that's, that's, that doesn't bode well for our plans for uh, developing agriculture. So whatever fiscal policy is going to be, whatever the changes in fiscal policy that we are going to undertake, uh, it will have to come, we have to examine it very, very, we have to think it through properly. Uh, so, yung mga pabigla-bigla na pinataas, pinababa, uh, hindi natin magagawa yun dahil kung gawin natin yan, it will, uh, eh, we, if there are too many moving parts, you cannot anticipate what will happen. And so, we have to be careful and there are many variables. Move the variables one by one. Don't move them sasabay-sabay kasi then you don't know what's happening. Uh, we just followed, I guess, the scientific method. So the, my, my approach to the uh, fiscal policy, first is to codify it, to make it simpler, to make it more understandable, number one. Uh, se secondly, is to reduce as much of the tax uh, collections from those who are uh, suffering from the pandemic, the effects of the pandemic. Uh, that means MSMEs, uh, agricultural sector, uh, transport, you know, so mabasa natin, let's hope we can raise funds in another area and use it there. Uh, so, 
then again, uh, very important to me is the distribution of wealth issue. So that will be also be part of the uh, thinking that will that will obtain when we, we talk about fiscal policy. So it's uh, difficult for me at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question, but it's difficult for me to answer your question because I cannot talk about specifics because they will all be part of a larger uh, to give uh, opportunities to those that have suffered, maybe by lightening uh, the tax liabilities that they are required to pay. Uh, but again, we have to see what the effect will be for the rest of the economy, for other sectors of the economy. So, yes, fiscal policy is going to monetary policy is also another dimension of monetary policy is also. I, I was just watching the news before I came here. Marami na talaga ng tataas ang interest rate around the country. So, this is what we were talking with the uh, 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 BSP President Ben Jokno, if we are going to interest, raise interest rates. Um, if our investment uh, rating will change, or can we do something to keep it there? But uh, he, he seems optimistic. Um, and uh, uh, I, to an extent, I share his optimism, and I think we can, we can do it. But uh, we have to be very, very, how do you say? Uh, we, we have to be very circumspect about making sudden changes, because as we've seen, all of these sudden changes uh, have had um, have had some unintended consequences in other parts of the world. Even Mahalad, may pumutok dun kasi dito sa may ginawa ka rito. Like I said, it's a, the economy is a living thing and it's always a work in progress. So we'll continue to, to examine all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, very crucial in revenue generation are the bureaus of customs and internal revenue. Yeah. Uh, my first question, meron na po ba yung napili o na, nakausap? Na well, let me put it this way, dami kong aplikante <laughs> for customs and BIR. But you're right. Critical, yeah. Uh, we have to increase our collections both in the, uh, the BIR, both in the co in, in customs. Uh, in sa, sa customs, marami naman tayong, marami na advice sa atin, marami naman dapat na maaaring gawin. Uh, we are talking about buying equipment, the ADP, the uh, uh, World Bank has given us many, much equipment na masyadong nagagamit. Uh, we have to, we have to increase that. Also, we have to develop the ports. Uh, so that they are the business grows, and from that growth in, in trade in the, in shipping, uh, the, 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 the collections of government uh, will increase. But the efficiency of the Bureau of Customs has to be really uh, has to be really seen too. Hindi naman mayyari na magkisa, and we of course we've all heard horror stories about this. But you know structurally we have to um, we have to approach it in in a new way uh, and say that. Uh, the, the main job of uh, the Bureau of Customs is uh, is to increase the collection through a ease of doing business, even just the documentation, and then of course all this new equipment that we can to to, to make uh, to be able to handle larger larger increases in volume. In volume. So that that I think is so, um, how we are going to head when it comes to customs. And yes, uh, uh, yes, I have I have uh, had many applications for to have the Bureau of Customs, but uh, I'm sure we will find the right people. I have, I have a fairly good idea uh, of who has been able to show performance. I, I, the, in, and the BIR, ganun din. Uh, what, we, what we have to do is make more efficient uh, the entire process, number one, make it easier for people to understand what the, what the, what the uh, tax structure is. Uh, put people in there, of course, Hindi mo matatanggal pa sa usapan, let's not, be, let's not pretend uh, na pag pinag-usapan customs at saka biyar, ang daming korupsyon. I was going to go there, sir, yeah. if I may. Uh, meron po pa kayong magiging specific marching orders to the people you will appoint to these agencies with regard to yun, allegations of corruption? Well, there, there's no place for, <laughs> there should not be any place for, for, for corruption. Unfortunately, uh, in, in some areas, naging endemic na talaga yung, ano, yung corruption, you will have to really dig deep. Uh, I hope we do not have to do what uh, then Prime Minister Mahathir did, where he said, "Sige, magpipin tati lang kayo, kasi may penyo sila. Magpipin tati lang kayo, kaya magpasok pag tangko kayo lang." Uh, I hope we don't have to go that far, but I'm willing to. Uh, this is too important; otherwise, it, uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, corruption. The oh, kalimutan na lang natin yung nakaraan. Uh, they, let's just do it. We have to say that. Okay, that was not under my watch. Hindi ako, hindi ako na mamahala nun. Ngayon ako na na mamahala. So wala nang ganyan. At kung meron pang ganyan, eh, ah, bulabulin talaga namin kayo. At uh, hindi po pwede yan because we will not succeed. 
the government, the economy in the Philippines will simply not succeed if we cannot collect uh, duties, tariffs, etc., uh, through the Bureau of Customs, and we do not have good collection on uh, on uh, taxes, uh, both at the national and at the local level. Indeed, we cannot. The numbers don't. <laughs> the numbers don't uh, don't match. So that's why it's, it will be very. It is very very important, and we will, uh, we we have to at the very least reduce the corrosive influence of corruption in government as a general rule. Receiving on appointments. Uh, sa DICT po, uh, PBBM, meron na po kayong uh, nagpipisil kung sinong ilalagay nyo doon. Since sabi nyo po kanina, priority po ninyo yung uh, digitalization. Yeah, um, I have already a person there, but we are still trying to put together the plan. Uh, so in the next, within this week, pwede na natin, pwede na natin. Kasi inaayos pa lang namin. Kailangan lang para, 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 para sa alin, bago pa tayo mag-nome, maliwanag na kung ano yung eh, kailangan natin namin gawin. At uh, kung paano gagawin, ano yung timetable. So yun ang nililiwanag ko pa naman sa ngayon. It really is at this, at this stage, the ICT is at its technical. Uh, ano ba yung kaya natin gawin? Where's the technology now? Who can help us with the technology? So we're trying to figure that out. Uh, because the uh, digitalization affects every single agency in government, both national and local. And until we do it, the um, efficiencies natin, uh, yun, corruption na naman, maraming uh, sources of abuse. And certainly, the ease of doing business lang. Yung tao naman, hindi naman dapat pagpupunta yun ng dalawang pong opisina. You spend three days para makuha ng mga pirma na uh, lalapit-lapitan pa ng mga fixer na kailangan tanggalin natin lahat yun. So, uh, and digitalization will be key to to achieve that. So, um, let, let us lay, lay it out first between us, between ourselves, and then I will, I will explain to you uh, soon uh, uh, what, the DI, what the role that the ICT is expected to play and how it will do it and who will be, who will be in that uh, department. Doon lang po sa ano, no, ito yung pinaka-concern ng ating mga mamamayan, yung uh, napapalita na po na maibababa sa 20 pesos ang kagag kilo ng uh, bigas. That's the aspiration. Mm -hmm. Paano that's, po natin yung gagawin? That's what it, ibubuhin natin yung value chain na pinag-uusapan ko sa ano. Kausap ko na yung mga ibang trader, baka pwede natin i-hold ng ilang buwan yung presyo ngayon. Uh, uh, we're, we, I think we'll be able to do it uh, as a first step. But in the long term, we really have to fix our value chain. That's the only way. Ngayon, ang nagiging problema, sa one of the problems that, that, that is popping up in agriculture, yung edad ng ating mga magsasaka. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen the statistics, it's 56, 57, whatever. But that's not a good number, that's too high a number. And unfortunately, ang mga farmer mismo nagsasabi sa kanilang mga anak, wag kang magfarming, ang hirap ng buhay na ito. Mag-aral na lang kayo, magtrabaho kayo sa opisina. Kaya kami naghihirap dito para hindi nyo na kailangan gawin ito. And that's why young people are not coming into, into agriculture. Now, how do we change that? Uh, we must employ new technologies. Uh, it has to be industrial farming. It has to be, we have to, with, especially with the advent of uh, global warming. Nakita nyo ba itong taon na ito? Naintindihan nyo ba yung weather? <laughs> Kung kailan yung, uh, yung tag-araw, kailan yung tag-ulan? Sinasabi ng pag-asa sa atin, tag-araw ngayon, pero panay naman ang ulan. Sinasabi nila, tag-ulan na, hindi naman ang ulan. <laughs> so, talagang mag masyado na magulo. That's why we need high-tech solutions. And that will bring younger people in. Uh, because we're not talking anymore about traditional farming only. Of course, you will still have to put seeds into the ground. You know? But marami ng bagong technologies that are developed by younger people. And so they can get involved in, in agriculture again. Uh, like I said, COVID changed everything. We cannot depend on the old system. Uh, we cannot depend on what we, as, on business as usual. That would be a disaster. If you, if, the pre-pandemic world is never coming back. That is a, a hard truth that we all have to, to accept. Uh, and the, what's coming is something that we are not, we don't quite know yet. But it's beginning to show what, what, what that will be. So in, in terms of agriculture, we have to move with the times. And we have to be very uh, uh, open to new, new strategies, new technologies, new techniques, um, not only in the actual technical uh, part of, of, of agriculture, but also in the organization of our agricultural community and our, our agricultural sector. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's something that we have to deal with. So if we, the aspiration is 20 pesos. It, I don't know. If, I, I think it, uh, we, if we work very hard at it, we'll uh, it, it, 
Oh boy, pag nabuo yung, pag nabuo yung ating sinataw na value chain, we have to do research and development. Marami naman tayo magaling eh. We have to do research and development, find the new varieties, find the new techniques. With the price of fertilizer getting so high, anong mga alternatives natin, organic, etc. Uh, and how do we, how do we uh, mass produce that? Uh, in the long, in the dozen of. And then, the, we have to bring all these new uh, technologies to the farmer. And we have to teach them what this new, how to best, uh, how to best take advantage of uh, all of the things that we have discovered. We have to find new ways of of of, uh, of production. And I went in agriculture. No, pinag usapan hindi lang bigas yan eh, hindi lang crops yan eh, fisheries yan at saka livestock. So lahat yan kailangan natin ng tignan. And it, with with in mind, you should always keep in mind there must be sufficient food supply. Kailangan may sapat na bigas, kailangan, kasi yan ang ating ano. Uh, meron, we have to also look at protein. Siyempre, for stock fisheries, hindi lang naman iisa yan. So, uh, that, that has to be developed. Now, the, the good thing about that is that uh, for the Philippines, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Marami naman tayong pupuntahan na magtaturo tayo. Uh, ang nasakit lang dyan is these are the people that studied in UPLB <laughs> na may pupunta na, na, na ano po, pa, paano ba yung pinakabago, pinakabago, pinakamaganda eh, yan yung mga nasa iri noon, nasa field rice uh, bumalik na, umuwi na and they're, they're making a success of agriculture but you know, whatever it takes we will do it Thank you, Ms. Eden uh, Jerry, if you have no more questions and appointments you can go to food prices uh, Appointments lang, sir, balikan ko lang ah, Sige, uh, magkakaroon ba ng special assistant to the president uh, na position and who will it might be. Well, the, the, that actually is an existing position already. Uh, special assistant, yes. Uh, yeah, I suppose we can already you know, see. We've asked Congressman Anton Nagdameo to fill that position. Yeah, because it's uh, very sensitive and very uh, uh, important in the sense that uh, he, we have worked with each other since, well, since he was a child. He didn't have a child known. Little since he was, he was young. Uh, so he knows me very well. He has been with us, working with with me for past ten years, more than So in terms of the working relationship, and then, you know, um, yes, between the two of us, we've already found the modus vivendi. So, so that that should be an easy uh, that should be an easy uh, uh, easy position for him to, to pick up on. Sir, uh, may inside info kaya tapat alam mo. Sir, uh, yung uh, si Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, uh, what will happen to him? And recently, he has been told na told us sa media na there's an offer for uh, Professor Clayta Carlos to join your cabinet rank. Uh, hmm. Anong update sa kanya, sir? Marcoleta and uh, Professor Carlos. Uh, Everybody is still in, ano? Everybody is still, uh, we're still talking about the role. Because ang, ang approach ko naman sa lahat na, na naririkuminda o napupunta sa akin, is, uh, first of all, um, where do you feel? Marami naman nagsasabi kahit saan, basta ilagay mo ako kahit saan. Uh, marurunong naman, magagaling naman. And I, I always ask them back, said, where do you feel you will be uh, the most, uh, the most uh, useful? And so all of that, si, si Katante Marcoleta, uh, I asked him the same question and uh, I'm waiting for his answer. Uh, so, but, but definitely, um, with his legal prowess, I think that he will be of great use to us. Now, I understand that in his particular situation, there is an opportunity for congressman oh, oh, on the party list. Uh, so he will have to decide that. That's his decision to make. So let's talk about it. The, the, the professor, we, of course, we've been in consultation with her and asking her. And again, it's the same question. Where, where do you feel that you will be, uh, you will be, you will be the most help? And again, we're, we're waiting for that answer because uh, very, we know that the professor is a professor. She's a piece in foreign, especially in terms of foreign policy and international politics. There's a lot of things that we Soldier, sir. Who's your soldier? Oh, sorry. Solicitor General. Sir? Soldier. OSG. Which one? Solicitor General, sir. Social welfare, dude. Huh? Ah, soldier. Oh, ah, okay. They uh, won't even Okay. Marami din eh. Ang daming magagaling. Uh, we are lucky in that uh, marami nga na who are some of the uh, legal luminaries are, are, are have expressed their willingness to join the government and that's one of the offices that uh, we're talking about. Uh, that's going to be very important. I'll, I'll talk to, uh, we, we will, hindi pa, hindi pa finalized. Hindi pa finalized ang pag-aaral. Sino magsasol dyan? Do you have a question on the prices? 
isa ho sa mga immediate na problema nga harapin ng inyong administrasyon ay ang sinasabing food crisis ng Department of Agriculture and Rock just this week. Laman po ng balita yung kakulangan sa patatas. And then, ang sabi ng Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food, maaaring last quarter po ng taong ito ay maramdaman natin ang gusto itong food shortage dahil sa taas ng presyo ng fertilizer, farm inputs, mataas ang presyo ng trigo. Ano ho ang inyong mga concrete plans para masiguro ang sapat at abot kayang pagkain sa lahat ng Pilipinas? We have to just increase production and baka mapilitan pa rin tayo mag-import. The importation was forced on us because our production, the problem is that the production was not sufficient. Now, since probably the production was not sufficient, to keep the prices down to an affordable level, we have to import. We're in an emergency situation. So we may, we may have to continue to do that. Uh, but for in, in my view, uh, not only for import substitution, I think we really have to help the agricultural sector. In the immediate future, yun, yung mga inputs, kailangan natin tignan what can the government do to support the inputs. The biggest, the biggest uh, component now is urea. And again, yung, exactly as you mentioned, 2,000 pesos, hindi nila kaya talaga. So maybe there is a way that we can come to, we can make a, we can, we can uh, 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 come to an agreement uh, with some some other countries, not to buy in bulk or to somehow defer payment, uh, all of these things uh, that we will have to do because it's a crisis. So we have to bring down the price of inputs if we are going to increase production. But we cannot just look at, again, business as usual. We have to really find new ways of uh, growing food. We have to find new ways of uh, uh, for the livestock. We have to find new ways of fisheries, both uh, coastal and uh, inland. Uh, there are many opportunities there. So I think that's something that we must pursue. But again, as I told you, the, in the immediate future, we, are, we have to support the farmers. And the problems with the inputs now, we cannot change immediately. But immediately, what we can do, as I said, is to find sourcing of the inputs that, again, we'll have to import. I mean, it hurts to, 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 to say it. It hurts to think it. But we, we, we are really, we are in an emergency. Nakabayaan talagang agree. May pondo po ba tayo para sa pag-aangkat? Sa pag-aangkat? I think we'll be able to, I think we'll be able to do it. Hindi naging, hindi naging maliit na bagay yung gera sa Ukraine. Because dun tayo hindi yung wheat na tinat sinasabi. Hindi yan yung para hindi yung problema yung para sa pinapay. Yung wheat sa feeds. Yun ang nagiging problema natin. Uh, so these are these are uh, these are events that are completely beyond our control. So we have to find other ways. So can we import somewhere else? Uh, can we make an arrangement somewhere else? Like we did with oil in the 70s. Na kinausap natin yung mga oil, produ oil producers and sinabi natin bigyan nyo naman kami ng magandang uh, option. And maybe, we will, and not maybe, we will have to do that in the meantime for uh, the agricultural inputs. Pero kailangan talagang paspasahin lahat yung mga research and development, lahat ng yung sistema ng pautang. Uh, I think that that's one of the areas that we really want to look at. Um, Unfortunately, Land Bank has converted itself not into an agricultural bank anymore. It really operates as a commercial bank. Uh, so maybe we can ask, we can re, uh, we can uh, return uh, those in lending institutions that are supposed to be uh, supportive of the agricultural industry, supportive of farmers, back to its original, uh, its original uh, brief. Uh, Na, na kung saan saan naman napunta eh. So we have to return some of the, we have to return many of the functions of agencies in government to what they are supposed to be, but they have turned into something else. Like NFA was never formed to import, quite the contrary. NFA was formed to stabilize prices. And sana ibalik natin doon. Uh, but again, uh, I don't want to sugarcoat the problem. Uh, it's uh, it, the, the, the problem is, is serious. Uh, it will take in the immediate future, I think we will be able to find palliatives for now. But those cannot be the solutions, the long-term solutions. We have to find long-term solutions. There's, and, and there's nothing more. We have to go back to, to I know I keep saying the, the phrase, but that really is where we're headed, is the value chain of agriculture. From the very beginning of it, to production, to processing, to mechanization, to uh, uh, credit all the way to retail. Uh, it uh, we 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 have we have the we have the basic elements in place. We just have to return everyone back to what their function is is uh, what function is needed by the agricultural sector for them.
sir, what about uh, how do you intend po na, uh, to resolve the high uh, prices of uh, petrol petroleum products? Uh, are you planning to uh, buy back petrol? Since sabi po ni Mr. Ramon Ang, eh, willing naman siyang ibenta ulit uh -huh. yung uh, petrol sa, under your administration. And then yung OPSF, um, yeah. ano po ang inyong uh, plan mo? Uh, ibalik ba yun? Well, first of all, the, we cannot control prices. Uh, this, this is the, this is the, uh, the, the, the nub of the problem. It's beyond us. Uh, hindi tayo price giver, price taker tayo sa, sa oil market. Uh, so, kung ano ang mangyari, when OPEC decides to do one thing, OPEC decides to do something, we just have to accept it and we just have to take it. Uh, what we did, as I said, but if I remember correctly, and actually I was part of the effort, uh, was in the, in the, when the 1973 oil crisis hit, uh, what we tried to do was to make uh, more beneficial arrangements. Like I remember I was sent on a mission by my father together with, with, uh, with uh, then uh, uh, Secretary Velasco of uh, Energy. Uh, and we discussed with Saudi Arabia and all the other producing, oil producing countries that we buy oil from uh, to lengthen the payback period from, I think it was 90 days to 180 days. And we were able to manage that, which made it talagang uh, naging mas maganda ang sitwasyon because also we were very worried at that time of our foreign reserves. So that helped very much in the, in, in, in the situation, in the management of the oil crisis in 1973. I think that we can also consider what is happening now as another oil crisis. And that's why I, uh, we will see if we can do that. Marami naman tayong kaibigan na siguro naman handang tumulong. At I think that the, the relationship that has been formed uh, with countries in the Middle East, oil producers in the Middle East, by our OFWs, uh, will, will, will help us. Because meron na silang experience sa Pilipino. At marami na tayong, uh, we have many dealings already with them. Maybe we can open these, uh, uh, these negotiations. <laughs> and on the ground here, again, uh, I was at the very beginning when, even before Ukraine, um, the, we were watching the oil and gas prices just going up and up and up and up. And I, I proposed, I said, why do we not subsidize the importation of all uh, energy products? And we did the numbers and the truth of the matter is we cannot afford it. We cannot do that. So we have to... We have to uh, we have to choose the sectors. I've mentioned transport before. Uh, is one because it's the first hit. But of course, you know, pag pinag-usapan dyan si presyo ng presyo ng langis ay napektuhan lahat. But I think we will just have to choose the areas that we can support, that we can afford to support. Because of course, we'd like to support all of them. But we, as I said, we cannot afford it. Uh, so we will find have to find different ways, a more focused approach. Uh, Doon sa mga talagang uh, na malaki ang component ng kanilang cost of doing business, malaki ang component ng presyo ng langis. Iba-iba uh, naman yan eh, sa iba't ibang sektor. And then also, there's, an el there's a time element to all of this. Na, uh, yung iba, tatama, tinamaan na, kaagad. Yung iba, baka six months down the road pa. Baka pero meron pa tayong uh, sa kanan natin, huwag na muna natin uh, i-prioritize. So, dito na muna tayo sa tinamaan na. So, and then, kasama dyan sa analysis na yan, sino ba talaga yung kailangan natin para buhayin natin ang ekonomiya? So, mag-focus din tayo doon. Baka pala, doon tayo tutulong para bumulusok ang economic activity doon sa area para matulungan ang ating economic recovery. Right, this is our last round. We have time for only two more questions. Oh, Mr. That was fast. Uh, yes. <laughs> Stay natin, sir. <laughs> if you want. Sir, uh, sa kuryente, uh, ERC Chair de Banadera, nag-suggest na tanggalin daw sana po ninyo ang 12% VAT on the generation mm. charge at ang uh, buwisan is yung distribution charge lang para mm. baba po yung sigil sa kuryente. Mm. Your thoughts on that, sir? That's one of the things we're looking at. Uh, we, may, mayroon, mayroon talagang pwedeng, uh, ano eh, um, that it, we in each, uh, even on the spot market, in the transmission charge, there are areas that pwede pa nating ipabae. Uh, so, again, um, I've been talking to some of the producers, the uh, yung ating edi, sa energy production side natin. Willing naman sila, naintindihan naman nila that this is an emergency situation. Uh, and of course, uh, we talk, you mentioned now the ERC. The, we have to be very strict in enforcing IPIRA. But beyond that, we also have to look at possible amendments to IPIRA. 
dahil medyo na-outdated na yung iba, ibang provisions sa IPRAN. Kasi nagbago na yung sistema. Uh, just the division between production, transmission, and distribution, that was IPRAN was supposed to take care of that. Pero iba yung nangyari. So we have to look into, the, into the, the, that law. But yeah, uh, meron kaming nakikita, baka may makuha dito, baka may makuha yan, baka may makuha dito para ibabakal na ng presyo ng, presyo ng, uh, ng gasolina, ng crudo, ng gas. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the problem is, kasi ang production side naman natin when it comes to energy, it's more or less in line with the rest of the rest of the world. Uh, so it's in the system. There, there, there are problems that are inherent in the system, uh, the way it has evolved. So kailangan talaga natin balikan. Uh, and uh, the key there will be Ipira. And uh, we already have team, a team doing just that, looking to see where we can reduce the price of, uh, of uh, petroleum goods, number one. And where, what changes we have to make in terms of legislation, in terms of policy, uh, to make the whole system more efficient, despite the fact that uh, the prices of oil keep going up. Uh, we may, <laughs> the, the, there is the other issue when it comes to energy, in that we have made commitments internationally uh, to reduce our dependence on, first of all, coal, and to replace it with renewables. But when we first tried to do that, right after COP26, if you remember, we tried, the whole world tried to do it. Wala pa lang kapalit yung coal. Hindi pa ready yung renewables. So, tignan natin yun. We have to also determine the mix of uh, renewables. Uh, the renewables to traditional. Diyan na pumapasok ang usapan ng nuclear. Because if you look at statistics, look at it. Tanggalin muna natin yung mga politika. Tignan natin talaga ang data. Nuclear remains to be the cleanest and cheapest way to produce um, to produce energy. Uh, the problem is that the lead time uh, for any power plant, not, not, not only nuclear, minimum yata five years. So matagal yan. So we, in the transition, we have to find another source, that a cleaner source uh, of energy. Uh, so maybe gas will be the uh, transition. And the gas is cleaner than coal, and this is as clean as it's going to get. But until we are able to sufficiently increase our power production through renewables, uh, we have to find the the pantawid uh, from uh, purely traditional to the new mix of renewables and traditional. So it's, energy is hard. <laughs> energy is hard. We really did the 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 the, the world the world situation, the local situation, the way that we have evolved our systems. Uh, it's very it can, it can be quite complicated. So we have to be we have to really come up with uh, with some good strategies there. Uh, but in general, we have begun to see the areas where uh, the potential that we can get from the lower level of the Okay? Last question. Yeah, sir, uh, on foreign policy. Um, oh, okay. Yung uh, may patuloy po mga reports ng incursions, even spying sa internal uh, waters ng Pilipinas. Ano ho ang magiging position niyo with regard to uh, asserting our sovereignty in the region? What is your position on the arbitral ruling and how will you enforce it? Well, the, uh, in, 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 in terms of sovereignty, there is no wiggle room there. Our sovereignty is sacred. Uh, we will not compromise it in uh, in any way. We are a sovereign nation uh, with uh, a, a functioning government, uh, so that, the, that that we do not need to be told by anyone uh, how to run our own country. So the, that, that that's essentially it. sovereignty, self-determined in the Philippines. So again, there is no room for negotiation there. It, 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 it is. Uh, it, it, it is it is sacred and inviolable. So that is my approach to Philippine sovereignty. I have already said this before. Uh, considering in the West Philippine Sea that there have been these conflicts, and we will not allow a single square and we will make it smaller, a single square millimeter of our uh, of our uh, maritime. Uh, coastal and uh, up to we are 200 kilometers and uh, rights to be to be trampled upon and how do we do this we strengthen our we're talking when you know let's not uh, let's not uh, uh, trains around it we're talking about china and how do we do that we talk to china also consistently um with a firm voice and we say that we hey, hindi naman natin pwedeng girahin at ang gusto ba natin gawin, magkikera pa tayo ngayon, mapasok pa tayo sa gera, that's the last thing we need right now. Uh, so, 
we have to continue to discuss with them the, the conflicting uh, uh, claims that we have with China and that China has with other members of ASEAN. And I think ASEAN is still going to be a very critical part of that discussion. Of that, uh, uh, but nonetheless, we also have to continue to pursue bilateral uh, contact and communication with China. In fact, this is what I mentioned when I spoke to President Xi. Uh, when uh, he came, he called me to congratulate me on, on winning the election. Uh, I immediately went and I said that we have to continue to, to talk about this. We cannot, con we cannot be allowed to, it, we, this cannot be allowed to fester and to become more severe in terms of a, a problem between our two countries. Um, so that's why in foreign policy, the Americans now, of course, have a very strong global interest, strategic interest in the region uh, with the rise of China. Um, and uh, their view that the West Philippine Sea is a critical part of the trade routes, which it is. Um, and that's why it's, it's so important, trade routes uh, uh, for shipping in the region. So we are a small player amongst very large uh, giants uh, in terms of uh, geopolitics. So we have, to be, we have to fly our own way. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do not uh, subscribe to the old thinking of Cold War, of the Cold War, where we had the spheres of influence, where you were under the Soviet Union, where you were under the United States. Um, I think that we have to we just find an independent foreign policy where we are friends with everyone. That's the, it's, it's the only way. We, uh, the, the, uh, the closest part of China to my province, Ilocos Norte, 600 kilometers away. We have to be, we have to be good neighbors, and we ask them to be good neighbors to us as well. Uh, it is of mutual, it is of mutual benefit to our countries. Now, the role that the United States is going to play, well, we define that role very simply. Well, it comes from our traditional uh, relationship with the United States, which has been very strong and very advantageous to both of us, both the United States and the Philippines, over the past 100 or so years. So, uh, it is uh, that, that's how we define that. So we must maintain that balance. Uh, uh, I think we are not, I, I don't think we are the only country that's having to do that. And uh, again, the partnerships that we make within the region, ASEANs uh, primarily, are going to be are going to be of critical importance when it comes to that. So uh, we have to make those, uh, you know, uh, as I told the ambassadors when they came, not only economically, but geopolitically, as we emerge from the pandemic and the crisis that it brought, uh, we have to form alliances and partnerships because no country can do this, can recover or can change foreign policy on their own, uh, can, can change the geopolitical, sorry, change the geopolitical situation on their own. And that's why we have to forge partnerships. And those are the partnerships that will keep things stable. And that's my belief and that's my approach. Last lang po yung arbitral ruling. Arbitral ruling. Patuloy po ba natin ito ikigit? Ay, hindi natin. Nasa atin na yung arbitral ruling. So we will, of course, we will got, we got, we have a very important, very important ruling in our favor. And we will, we will use it to continue to assert what are, to assert our territorial rights. It's not a claim, it is already our territorial right. And that is what the, that is what the arbitral ruling can, can do to help us. Um, Ma'am? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, may yung mga kababayan Meron daw po ba kayong mensahe sa Duterte na Sir? Well, well, yung mga pinapag-usapan natin, namin, uh, uh, bago pa ng eleksyon, ay sinasabi na, basta ito mga bagay na ito, ituloy mo. Uh, please, that is the request uh, that they submit. They said it's so important to him. And it's still, uh, siyempre, yung kanyang, yung kanyang uh, priority has always been anti, the uh, drug, uh, um, anti-drug uh, problem. Uh, and of course, I, you have to observe. Sir, sorry, when did this meeting take place, if I may? Before the there were several, actually. We, it's not just a single. And this happened when you were already the front runner in the survey, Not the first, not the first few. The pa, but so more than once, point. Oh, no. Okay. 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 How do you want to do this? Uh, ako na lang na natirang kandidato sa administration side. Uh, 
Parang pwede pa tayo magtulungan, gano'n, gano'n, the PPP, etc. Anyway, that was, uh, but the, ang kanya, ang sinasabi niya, yung, yung, the one thing that he was very assertive about was that, ituloy mo yung, yung anti-drug uh, syndicate na sinibulang ko. Do it your own way. He really said that, do it your own way. Palitan mo, gawin mo yung best, pero huwag mong iiwanan yan dahil kawawa ang kapataan natin. Talagang uh, nasisira ang mga buhay nila. Uh, so that, uh, I, I fully appreciate what he, what he said. And of course, the drug problem, the, the drug problem in the country continues to, to be a problem. And so we must continue to uh, co continue to uh, uh, look that way. So foreign policy, of course, the uh, the president, the PRRD, has taken a very um, slightly unorthodox uh, approach. Uh, but again, balance is the same. So we agree on that. Um, in terms of the economy, uh, he, the, the last the last time we spoke, he said he, well, they were discussing the increase from 200 to 500. Uh, sa, uh, sa ayuda. So and then he, they were talking about it. He turns to me and said, "Sorry, na lang kung ibig sabihin sa nato ubusin ko yung pera pero kinala na talaga ng tao." No, it was just a very casual discussion. But he was, you know, as he present, he apparently he likes to to throw it out there to see how people react and to see if uh, there how it should be changed. And I was just a, I was just a bystander. I was just watching. Uh, and so that that talagang tama rin naman siya. Uh, I don't think he had the choice. That talagang it's kilangan parin ng tao kawawa ng sa tao. So uh, that, those were the areas that we specifically spoke about. Um, uh, yeah, so that's. Uh, he can only do that, sir. I'm sorry. He can only do that. If he wants to. Drugs are or take drugs are okay. If he wants to. So it's a standing offer from the president. I will no. He, he no. He has not. We have not talked about it. Um, but uh, I'm open to anyone who is able to help. Uh, able to help in, in the government. So. Uh, as matagal na kami matagal na kami magkaibigan ni PRRD may no mayor siya pa a long long time ago so i'm sure if he wants to if he wants to play a part sa sabihin naman niya sa akin i'm certainly open to all of that so what about the presidential post for the reach out na ba sa inyo uh, open by the administration uh, sa mga uh, nakalaban niyo na magdinig na Si Sean, confident naman po siya. Marami na. Marami na. Meron nga yung sinasabi. Meron mga, hindi ko na nababang rin kung sino, pero iilan dyan. Sabi na yun. Eh, lumabang kami sa inyo. Siguro wala na kami pag-asa dyan sa gobyerno. Huwag yung politika lang yan. Trabaho na tayo. Okay lang yun. For me, that's part of it. Sorry, Sean. Yung mga kasi nakikita ko, 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 the, the people have been, the people have spoken the, the decision has been made so let's work on that basis and uh, again ang aking criterion talaga sa kukunin natin eh kung sino yung marunong sino yung magaling doon sa area na yun at handang tumulong what else do you need yeah, diba? kung, and i was right before when i said one of the hardest parts of picking these experts and yung pinakamagaling is that because they are successful they're already maganda na yung buhay nila eh so sabi yung pumasok ka sa politics ang gulo-gulo ng politika pa at ang dami talagang willing dahil Pilipino sila nagamaman sila sa Pilipinas Maraming salamat po yan Thank you 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 Th